Welcome to Medilacto. Today we are going to discuss anti-cancer drugs, specifically alkylating agents. In the previous lecture, we discussed the anti-metabolites and antibiotics, anti-tumor drugs. But now we are going to discuss alkylating agents, specifically what types of the alkylating agent? Nitrogen mustard alkylating agents. So, in the nitrogen mustard alkylating agent, you will see different drugs, cyclophosphamide, iphosphamide, chlorambucil, and malflat. But in this lecture, we will just focus on the cyclophosphamide. Okay. So, as we know that the cyclophosphamide is actually the cell cycle non specific drugs. It means that the cyclophosphamide act on both dividing and the non dividing cell. So, as you know that in the uh, cell cycle, you see the four phases uh, commonly G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase and M phase. And after that, there is interface in which there is no deviant. Okay. So, uh, cyclophosphamide non-specific act on both dividing and non-dividing cell. So, cyclophosphamide actually taken into the body through two routes, IV, intravenous and oral route. So here are basically the two roots of the cyclophosphamide. So if we discuss the mechanism, that is very much important. Okay. First one is the, if someone takes cyclophosphamide, then the cyclophosphamide goes to the liver. This is the first thing. First of all, cyclophosphamide goes to the liver. And in the liver, as you know that the, the, there is a cytochrome 450 convert the cyclophosphamide into 4-hydroxy cyclophosphamide. It means that the, in the liver, you will see the hydroxylation of the cyclophosphamide. You will see the hydroxylation. Hydroxylation of cyclophosphamide in the liver with the help of the cytochrome 450. Okay. It means that the the active form of the cyclophosphamide will produce later. So that's why we can say that the cyclophosphamide is actually a pro-drug. This is actually a pro-drug because the active form of these drugs will form later. Okay. Now, cyto, uh, cyclophosphamide convert into 4-hydroxy cyclophosphamide. After that, it will convert into the aldophosphamide. Again, and next is the, it will break into two compounds. First one is the phosphoramide mustard and the acrolein. Okay. So these two important compound, phosphoramide mustard and the acrolein. Okay. Phosphoramide actually act as alkylating agent. So that how? First of all, as we know that the DNA has different bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine. So, Actually, most important component is the guanine. Guanine. Okay. At the position 7 of the guanine, you see the presence of the nitrogen. And that nitrogen atom having lone pair. So, that's why we can say that that nitrogen of the guanine is actually nucleophilic. That love the nucleus of the atom having positive charge because atom nucleus having positive charge and the negative electron will attract the positive charge. Okay. Next, if you see phosphoramide must have a structure like this. This is the structure of the phosphoramide okay, compound having chlorine atom at the both corner. Okay. First of all, as there is no charge on the phosphoramide. First of all, the charge will be created on phosphoramide mustard positive charge and after creation of the positive charge this compound will attach to the nitrogen of the guanine at position 7. So first of all one chlorine is removed from the phosphoramide mustard and it will form a cation and that cation is aziridinium cation. Aziridinium cation. And that cation will be positive charge if one chlorine atom is removed. Okay. And after that, it forms a rings. Okay. Now, phosphoramide easily can attach to the guanine. Okay. When another chlorine is removed and produce another positive charge, another guanine having ability to attach to the phosphoramide. So, it means that if I say that 
here is the DNA 1 or here is the DNA 2. DNA 1 having governing, DNA 2 having governing. Okay. So, as you know that the positive charge will be created at both corners of the phosphoramide mustard. So, it means that the positive charge of the phosphoramide mustard will attach to the negative of the nitrogen atom of the governing and that form a bridge. And the bridge can be within the DNA and between the DNA. So, this is very much important and after that you will see the cross linkage of the DNA genetic material or you can say abnormal pilling and that's why due to the abnormality that is present in the cell causes the apoptosis and ultimately the tumor cell will destroy. So, this is the case. Now, the phosphoramide can destroy the tumor cell. No doubt normal cell will also be destroyed but tumor cell is our major target. Okay. If we see the clinical uses, it is used in the non-Hodgkin lymphoma, leukemia, breast and ovarian cancer. These are basically the more specific uh, cancer that in which you will see uh, use the cyclophosphamide. Okay. If we see the adverse effect, first one is the myelosuppression in which will more marrow suppress and ultimately the uh, productions of the cell will reduce. Next is the nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. This is the general uh, symptoms of the cyclophosphamide. Okay, alopecia, loss of hair. Okay, amenorrhea, missing of the periods in the female. That is also the adverse effect of the cyclophosphamide. Okay, and secondary malignancy. Just keep one thing in your mind. That the alkylating actually can cause the secondary malignancy. Actually, alkylating agents actually used in the treatment of the cancer. But they can also cause the cancer as well. This point is very much important. That's why you got it. Secondary malignancy, specifically acute leukemia. Leukemia. So, this is very much important. It means that the alkylating agent can be mutagenic and carcinogenic, cancer causing, okay. And most important is the hemorrhagic cystitis in which you will see the bladder, walls of the bladder will inflame and you will see the bleeding and that blood can be present in the urine as well. So, this is actually the most important adverse fact of the cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide as well. So, in this case, you can prevent hemorrhagic cystitis by drinking large amount of the water and by taking the misna. So, this is the two most important misna. Preventions from the hemorrhagic cystitis. First one, take drinking large amount of water and second one is the misna, sodium 2 marcaptoethane sulfonate. This drug that actually reduce the toxicity of the cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide as well. Okay. Next is the drug interaction. What drug should not be taken along with the cyclophosphamide and that is digoxin, phenobarbital and anticoagulant. So, this is the all about the cyclophosphamide. If you have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.